that at the end of the week, you get one, if not the greatest thinker we have in our program. For me, the most courageous thinker in America, my role model in getting into your face, but she does it much more elegantly than I ever can. <laughs> so please welcome Avital Brunner. So um, now you'll see, because this is a bit of a ball breaker, so I wanted you to um, feel that I was being kind of sweet to start off with. Um, this is part of an ongoing work on authority, uh, the disappearance of which has been the topic uh, of concern for Hannah Arendt, Kojev, Marcuse, a, a number of, of lights that, that shine on us or have been dimmed for one reason or another. So I should say that I just got, uh, <clears throat> um, I was just in contact with Judith Butler who would like to share one seminar with me next week. We'll discuss it with the director and see what he thinks. And this will be the topic of our discussion. Our, our class this will merge for a moment. Um, so I want to just give you a little bit of a, of a frame for this and explain that for Hannah Arendt and others, the disappearance of authority. And I, I'd like to mention that this is my 10th year here. And um, the connection is that um, in many ways, this school was founded without, let's say, any kind of ideological pitch, but nonetheless was founded in uh, relation to a kind of anti-authoritarian relation to, to discipline and thought. And of course, Wolfgang would be the exemplar of that uh, figure. We'll discuss that later. Um, now, for, for Hannah Arendt, the disappearance or vanishing of authority is somewhat of a calamity, perhaps similar to the way Carl Schmitt says that if we didn't have an enemy, we would be actually worse off. We need the figure of the enemy against which to push off because what would follow upon the evacuation of, of enmity would be um, monstrous, according to that liberal thinker, Carl Schmitt. So in any case, I just want to give you um, a sense of something foreboding that is coming down the pike. It's a brute menace. And I will try to focus on a part of this um, in, a, in, in a presentation that I'm calling, Have I Been Destroyed? Answering to Authority and the Politics of the Father. If I'm bringing up the politics of the father, in part it's because Freud asks, or says perhaps, that we still have to contend with the victory of patriarchy. And it also means that this will be the neuralgic point that I'm trying to get at, these archaic sovereignties that no matter how much we think we've shed or malted them, nonetheless um, continue to send out by remote control or up in your faces some sort of, sort of essential command. So I'm interested in, in thinking about archaic sovereignties this evening with you. Now, Alexandre Kojève wrestles with the losses and compensatory controls that accrue to authority. So if you've lost authority, what kind of economy of compensation comes in to fill in that blank? So for him, authority is over and out because um, God is no longer behind the controls or something like the Divine Father is no longer at the root of things. So he marks down authority because it lacks the necessary transcend transcendental guarantees. 
Hannah Arendt also turns toward the vacant lot of divine abandonment, where humankind is left to fend for itself in the draft of monotheistic withdrawal. So the gods have fled, and the one deity left for us has bailed or retreated into mute indifference. So somehow, authority, or we, let's say, let's say authority is something that comes in like an emergency supply to fill up what's no longer there. Um, and we're left to fend for ourselves, authorities left to fend for itself in the blanks of an ontotheological arrangement of replacement parts. <coughs> what will replace authority? Can, is it replaceable or irreplaceable? These are some of the questions that I'll raise very briefly with you this evening. And I'll just say that for both Arendt and Kozhev, the distress of losing authority convenes core survival issues that need inventive arbitration as well as, in some essential ways, recall. They're calling authority back, but under conditions that no longer can hold authority together. So you might think of all those bumper stickers that say question authority and so on and so forth. And um, one of the issues here will be whether we can do without authority, whether we need it or, and, and so on, and whether we're dependent on it in certain ways. Is it even an addiction? And so on and so forth. So let me start with um, these uh, the part of the, these clips from, from um, an uh, oncoming work. My work typically borders the by now traditional university disciplines that hold these terms in check, political theory, philosophy, history, literary criticism, psychoanalysis, and the less stable coordinates of ethics. At times, I slalom in and out of the discursive formations associated with these and similarly regulated disciplinary markers. On other occasions, I travel their peripheries and tap their margins, which, since the thought of Derrida, cannot stay put in remote pockets of inscription, but for all we know, may well constitute their core, if such a thing exists or these nearly off-the-grid issues indicate at least the location from which key propositions pulsate. Sometimes the sub